Earthquakes are natural hazards that have the potential to become a natural disaster causing harm and devastating anything in its path. Earthquakes are described as a shaking of the ground caused by the sudden breaking and shifting of the Earth's plates. The origin of an earthquake is known as the focus. The nearer the focus is to the surface, the more devastating the earthquake is. The point on the ground directly above the focus is called the epicenter, which is the first area to be affected, usually suffering the most damage. If the focus comes from a depth of about 70 kilometers or less, it is determined to be a shallow focus earthquake. Otherwise, any deeper, it is referred to as a deep focus earthquake. Earthquakes occur either due to movement of plates or volcanic activity. Earthquakes that occur along a plate boundary are known as interplate earthquakes, whereas off a plate boundary are known as intraplate earthquakes. New Zealand has many earthquakes because the boundary of where the Pacific and Australian plates meet run through the South Island of New Zealand. These maps identify the earthquake prone areas in New Zealand. The earth is made up of an inner core and an outer core, followed by the mantle and the crust. The crust and upper mantle form the lithosphere, which is broken up into tectonic plates. The core is made up of hot magma. The hot magma pushes up from the core, which creates underlying convection currents that causes the plates to move in different directions. These plates will interact at their boundaries through either separating, colliding or sliding past each other. These movements begin the geographical process of the formation of an earthquake, as in some cases the plates become locked together, stress is placed on the rocks as kinetic energy is built up and stored within the rocks. It is when the plates give and the stress is too great, the stored energy is released as an earthquake. This stress is then released as energy through seismic waves generated from the focus beginning powerfully and lessening the further along it travels through the earth. A very powerful and damaging earthquake hit New Zealand with the magnitude of 6.3. This earthquake struck the city of Christchurch at 12.15pm of a Tuesday on the 22nd of February 2011, reaching most parts of the Canby region. The earthquake caused extensive damage throughout the whole city of Christchurch and Canby region of the South Island in New Zealand with a total of 181 people killed, 1,500 injured, about 100,000 buildings destroyed or damaged as well as causing the displacement of thousands of Christchurch residents. The earthquake struck 20 kilometres southeast of Christchurch at a depth of 5 kilometres, causing the city airport to close, cut phone lines, buckled roads, burst water pipes, collapsed buildings, power and water loss, and many aftershocks which continue to destroy already damaged buildings. An earthquake has obvious impacts on the list here, with direct impacts on the Earth's surface through shaking, ground rupture, landslides, avalanches, fires, destroyed forests, and severe building damage, which puts great amounts of movement and pressure on the land. With the formation of an earthquake, direct stress is put on the lithosphere, often resulting in the breaking of the ground, which often faults along these plate boundaries, creating a fault line. Tsunamis also begin due to earthquakes, which have huge effects on the lithosphere due to much flooding, which can disrupt the soil and land mass. Earthquakes also contribute to a considerable amount of impact on the biosphere, as it has the capability to disrupt the ecosystem, killing and destroying animals and plant life, along with crops, as well as causing much harm and death to human life. There is high injury and death to all living things in the biosphere as well as widespread property damage causing considerable disruption to the biosphere and total confusion and harm to life. Fires through gas explosions and tsunamis as a result of earthquakes also destroy a lot of life. Earthquakes pose serious issues to health, safety and economic sustainability, destroying modern industrial societies, affecting anything from a massive loss of life, infrastructure damage and financial instability. The impacts an earthquake have on our economy include the loss of income, job options and business, increase in medical requirements, destruction of industries and businesses, looting and theft, loss and destruction of property leading to high insurance claims, loss of industrial output and marketing systems as the damage to transport and communication links can make trade very difficult. These economic impacts become greater in the long term when taking into consideration the cost to rebuild businesses as the investments in the area will focus on repairs resulting in loss of income. Earthquakes have great impact on people's lives causing much disturbance to people's livelihoods. We encounter adversity when an earthquake hits. These social impacts of an earthquake include injury, disease and death, loss of property, loss of housing and resources, disruption of communication and transport, stress placed on families and community, breakdown of social order, loss of income, destruction of community structures and facilities. There is significant help needed in the society as it is broken down and needs much rebuilding, not just physically but emotionally. These social impacts don't just affect us straight after the disaster but also have long term effects as they place immense stress on the rebuilding of people's lives, homes and or businesses. As an individual you first need to have a household emergency plan to know exactly what to do in the case of an earthquake as well as making sure you know the community emergency plan. Your responsibility in an earthquake is making sure you and others are safe and get to a safe meeting place. Knowing what to do will avoid injury and death. Your emergency plan needs to include an emergency survival kit, canned food and stored water that will last up to three days. It is important you get identification, insurance and mortgage documents. Your plan is your responsibility. Learn it so you will know you are making the right decisions for you and others. The community is responsible for preparing and setting up evacuation centres for the affected people, as well as raising awareness about earthquakes and then furthermore about the evacuation plans for when an earthquake hits. Communities have the responsibility to educate citizens and provide relief to its people, as well as rebuilding infrastructure and ensuring that the building designs and land use is that of an earthquake resistant one. 
Communities need to provide local support teams like police, ambulance, fire brigade and hospital for immediate assistance for those affected. The government has numerous responsibilities, including monitoring fault lines, use of technology in predicting earthquakes, educating its population on what to do when an earthquake occurs, improvement of earthquake resistant designs and construction techniques to lessen the impacts earthquakes have on buildings. It also promotes an understanding of earthquakes effects, ensures evacuation plans are in schools and workplaces and that communities have enough support and preparation for an earthquake. Government organises and administers rescue and support teams and supplies resources, medical supplies, food, water, defence force personnel and funds for relief programs. A government organisation that was heavily involved in the rescue and support operations in Christchurch after the earthquake hit was the New Zealand Urban Search and Rescue. These are widespread teams that are found all through New Zealand. Each team is specific to its community but all go under the one government organisation. Urban Search and Rescue involves finding and rescuing people trapped under collapsed buildings and rubble. This was very much the case after the Christchurch earthquake as the spire of the cathedral collapsed and so did the TVNZ building which were two of the most heavily populated buildings at the time. As soon as the initial earthquake hit urban search and rescue personnel were deployed under the civil defence and emergency management as soon as they were available, entering buildings less than an hour after the quake had hit. The teams had a huge task to find people within the rubble and try and do so as quickly as possible, experiencing many aftershocks in doing so. It was estimated that there was within 100 to 300 people trapped under the two buildings alone, more than half of the total bodies estimated to be trapped, dead or alive. The teams placed most focus on the two buildings, in which case it was estimated about 100 people were saved and over 100 bodies recovered as deceased from the two buildings, more than half the total death count. I believe the response of the urban search and rescue teams was on a very high class and professionalism. These people will not only rescue hundreds, but also put their own lives at risk whilst doing so. They understood the risk involved in rescuing so close after the earthquake had occurred, but stood to their job to the best of their ability and more, reflecting great courage and love for fellow citizens. Their response being so quick and professional definitely saved many more lives and if it weren't for the efforts of the people in these teams, the death total would have been much higher.